Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. Hope you're all doing really, really well. Um, I'm in a very different filming location today. If you watched yesterday's video, which was my Christmas book haul, you'll know that I was using my new camera for the first time, which was very exciting, but the lighting was terrible. And I couldn't work out why, but I think it's because when I filmed on my phone, I would sit in front of like windows because it's the best light, but I actually think there was too much light. So we're, we're trying something new, but you can see both my bookshelves on my Christmas tree, so that's nice. Um, today I'm going to be filming my December wrap-up part two. Uh, I'll link my December wrap-up part one down below. It's only the 30th of December when you're seeing this, um, so it's not quite the end of December, but the only book that I want to read in this last couple of days is a reread um, that I've been wanting to do all year and putting off, and this felt like a good time to do the reread because that means I can get my like end of year content out a bit quicker. So um, I'm posting videos all this week, so today is my... December wrap-up part two and then tomorrow my yearly stats and then we'll move on to the best and the worst of the year. So I read nine books in the second half of December um, but only three of them haven't been in vlogs so as I always do my wrap-ups I'll start with those three and then I'll talk about the books that were involved in vlogs but I just won't go into as much detail and I'll link the vlogs below if you do want to watch them. So let's start with the three books um that i haven't talked about and weirdly they're all kind of a very similar vibe in that they're all kind of quite like weird disturbing books so let's start with i'm thinking of ending things by ian reed um i got this book for christmas and i read it in one sitting basically on boxing day and i still i'm not entirely sure how i feel about it this is a book about um a couple a woman who is going to meet her boyfriend's parents for the first time but she's thinking of breaking up with him and it gets very weird it's hard to talk not in spoilers but i'm gonna obviously try like i'm not gonna spoil it um this is the most disturbed um and kind of freaked out and tense i think i've ever felt reading a book i thought this was done masterfully i was immediately drawn in and throughout the novel the tension just builds and builds there's a couple of things in this couple of images in this book one involving a nail like a fingernail and one involving pigs if you've read it you'll definitely know what I mean about the pigs that I haven't been able to stop thinking about to the point where it's making me feel like sick to my stomach in everyday life um but then also yeah by the end of it I was like so tense I was like reading it and my boyfriend walked in the room and he's like why are you pulling that face because I was literally like so yeah in all those respects I think it was brilliant i thought this was so well written i loved how introspective it was i thought the pacing was amazing and i really hadn't read i don't know if you'd call it a thriller horror i'd never read anything like it before and i think on that it's amazing it's just a really smart well done book um my issue kind of came with the ending i think it's a good ending and i think it's smart and i don't think it's a cop out this is where it's hard to talk about spoilers but i do think that when I first read it, it felt like it could have been a cop-out, like a book that builds all this stuff and makes you really kind of want to know answers and then goes in a very left field direction, shall we say. I think I think sometimes that can be already disappointing and frustrating and like they've just been like, oh well. But then I've been when I've been reading kind of things about it, and I do think if I read this book again, which I would be tempted to do, I would like see how smart it was. And I do like the weird ending. So on the whole, I really, really like this book. Um I'd give it like a, it's hard, like loads, like most of the book was kind of like five star. It's not a five star, it's I guess somewhere between like a three and a half and a four. I think I do need to read it again. I also haven't watched the film, but whenever I post about this book on my Instagram or um, when I mentioned it in my haul, people were like, the film is so weird. Um, and a lot of the just like, when I was Googling to be like, what is this? A lot of the stuff that was coming up was for the film, which is a bit different. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to watch film, but I'm so glad I read this book. It was a really fun, weird experience. And I read um, Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Barazia, I think her name is. Sorry, I read it on script, so I don't have the book here. I'll insert an image. I hadn't really like planned to read this book. Um, I literally was just like on script and saw it. And even though I had like all my Christmas books and all this other stuff I could be reading, I was just like, let's do it. Cause it sounded really interesting to me. And again, such a weird book, like probably one of the weirdest books I've ever read. I loved it. It's basically about um, a kind of dystopian future in which meat, there was a virus that meant that you couldn't eat animal meat anymore um, and the world had to adapt. And the way it did that is started breeding humans to be kind of, you know, reared for meat and for animal products and goods. Um, and yeah, it's like you're following one character who works at one of these plants where humans are bred for meat. 
Um, and I just think the writing style in this book was so good for, like it matched the themes perfectly because it's such a disturbing book, like really grim. Um, if you don't like things about like, if you don't like disgusting descriptions, if you don't have a very strong stomach, like it's the most horrifying thing we could imagine really, you know, what happens to these human beings who are being reared for meat. But the writing style is so kind of like sparse, measured. Our main character is kind of conflicted, but I just thought looking at it through his eyes was a really good way of doing it because it could be something that feels so grotesque and horrible that it's like loses its impact and it certainly did not lose its impact. I also think that it went in really interesting directions. The ending took me completely by surprise. I gasped at the end of part one to part two, like, oh! and then the ending totally took me by surprise. Thought the pacing was brilliant, the kind of twistiness. And I just think it talks about so many interesting things and what it looked at in terms of kind of the animal industry. And it almost feels like it could happen. Like I was talking to Jay from the bar in the bookcase after I finished it. Cause I was like, I need to talk to someone. And he was like, it's so scary because it doesn't even necessarily feel that far away, um, which is disturbing. But yeah, I really, really, really enjoyed that. Would highly recommend it if you think you can kind of not handle it, but like if you're not going to be like completely disgusted, I think it's a really smart, interesting book. And then I read Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, which is another book I got for Christmas. And I just finished this this morning. I read it all in one sitting. So again, I'm like, here's a wrap up with all my thoughts that I haven't properly gathered yet. Um, this book, how to explain this book without giving any spoilers. So you're following um, a family who go away to an Airbnb on holiday in America um, and midway through their trip, this couple arrives who say that they own the Airbnb um, and that there was a kind of citywide New York power cut and they can't get home. So can they stay there? Um, and that's kind of all you would want to know. This book did not go where I thought it was gonna go. And I think if I'd known this was the direction it would go in, I wouldn't have picked it up because again, it's hard without spoilers, but I don't really like reading that kind of thing. It's a lot more, I guess it's a lot more of a kind of like disaster book than I was imagining it was gonna be a bit more about, can they trust these people? Are these people who they say they are? And I don't think it's spoilers to say that like that isn't really what happens. It's kind of just about what's happening that's brought these people together and it's bleak. It's really, really bleak, but I am really glad I read it. And I actually think for it not being the sort of book that I might usually like, it did it so, so well. Um, maybe because of that, it's a very slow moving book, um, very tense. It's kind of like a locked room story because you're just focusing on these people in this house. And I thought that was done brilliantly. Like the tension was amazing. The writing style's quite odd but I really liked it. Like it's written in a kind of almost like formal way, very like detailed about what the characters are doing, what they're thinking. And I love that sort of like forensic look at social interactions. And I thought all of the characters were really, really interesting. They each kind of brought something different to it. It was a, just such a look at kind of like the way humans react to things, the meaning of humanity. And again, it didn't feel like, well, even more so than Tender is the Flesh, like this doesn't feel like impossible what ends up happening in this book which i think is why it felt so bleak and so scary but i really really like that and like for what this book is i do think it's a brilliant example of it if that kind of makes sense there's a lot about kind of like class and race here as well because the family who go on holiday are white and then the couple who own this house are black and there's a lot of interesting look at the tensions between that and kind of about privilege the more i'm talking about it i'm like yeah i did really like this it's probably like a four star book for me i think Again, three, uh, three and a half to four star. I think this is so well written, so clever. And for me, it had just what I want out of a kind of more like far-fetched thrillery book in that it's really looking at human interaction um, and people in high pressure situations. It's weird, but I would actually recommend it. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I really liked it. So let's talk about the books that I've read that I've already talked about in vlogs. So the first vlog that falls into this is the one where I read like Tana French for a week, who is one of my favorite authors. I'll link both of them below. Um, and so for that, I read One by One by Ruth Ware. Um, and I liked it. It's a, a locked room, classic kind of murder mystery, very Christie inspired about a group of people who go on holiday to a luxury ski resort, basically. And um, this group of people who work together and you're following some of those characters and the woman who works at the chalet is like a chalet girl and an avalanche happens, they all get locked in and they start getting murdered one by one. It 
was fun. I like the kind of campy, Christy esqueness of it. I did think it was very atmospheric with the ski chalet and the avalanche. Um, it was it was predictable, I think, but I don't mind that. And I, I liked the tension in it. I did think the tension was sustained well throughout. So like, this is the sort of thriller that's just like a solid three star, like fun, not sad that I read it. Um, I do read a lot of crime and thriller. And so while it's not like in the same league as say, like leave the world behind or I'm thinking of ending things because they're so smart, so character focused, this isn't like that. Like the characters in here were poor, in my opinion. They felt like caricatures. I didn't really care about them. And towards the end, there was quite a lot put into like character development outside of the mystery, which I just kind of thought was a bit pointless because I didn't care about any of the characters. So yeah, it was, I read it. I think I read it all in one day, actually. And you know, it's not a, it's not a small book and it was fun and I had a good time with it. Um, yeah, no real massive complaints because I feel like I knew what I was gonna get from it if that makes sense. I then read The Lost Family by Libby Copeland. This was a book I'd never heard of before, not something I probably would have picked up and it was an absolute roaring success. I loved this book. I'm so glad I picked it up. This is a non-fiction by an American journalist Libby Copeland and it looks at family like you know Ancestry or 23andMe where you send off your DNA and like how as that's becoming more popular and so many more people are doing it specifically Americans although she does take somewhat of a global view um what that does to family so there's a lot of like personal case studies in here about people who have done those tests and found out things about their family they didn't know or they were trying to find a lost parent because they were adopted and I found those parts fascinating like so gripping page turning like you can't even believe it's real life but I guess that's it isn't it like nothing is as strange as real life and really moving this book made me cry one of a few books this year that did that but then I also loved the more journalistic parts as well the, the kind of investigation that Copeland does into what is the journey of those sites becoming so big in terms of like scientific developments um in terms of the companies questions around data privacy questions around um, race and what this means for you know reducing race to biological indicators eugenics the way it's been used um against indigenous population i think she just did a such a well-rounded investigation of what is a fascinating topic and is only going to become more and more prevalent as they i think as this happens but still balanced it with more of a yeah personal stories and questions of you know well what is a family and what is love and does DNA matter? How much does it matter? Looking at different people's reactions to it. I love this, I'd recommend it so highly. And then I read a thriller called The Hidden Things by Jamie Mason um, for that video. And I didn't really like this. It's kind of like a, action, a more like action packed thriller than a psychological one. Basically something happens that triggers a series of events surrounding this stolen painting. Um, and yeah, very fast paced which was fine, I flew through it, but I don't really love action-based thrillers. Following a lot of characters um, who are all kind of interested in this painting or implicated in what's happening. It's sort of the story of a man's downfall and of like devolving. I did think there was some interesting things around character and um, the way characters were interacting and maybe looking at, I don't know if you'd call it sociopathy, but that kind of thing, which I'm interested in, but ultimately like, it was just very meh for me. There wasn't really any like twists in it. It was just like fast paced, lots of characters, almost a bit like chase scenes. And by the end of it, I wasn't fully convinced by the plot or the characters. Like it didn't feel believable to me. So yeah, maybe like more of a 2.5 to three. Then my most recent vlog, which I'll link below, I um, got my best friend, my boyfriend and my sister to pick a book for me. I sent them a picture of my physical TBR and they picked a book based on the cover. So for that, I read Under the Udala Trees by Chanello Ocpranta. I enjoyed this. This was a three star book for me. Um, it's about a young girl growing up in Nigeria in the 1960s. So it starts when the Biafran War is happening, but um, we kind of grow up with her. There's not a lot of time spent during the war. And it's basically about her as a gay woman or discovering her sexuality and then what it means to live like that in Nigeria. I think those themes are really interesting. Um, it was, a, I liked getting that insight into a particular time in a particular country and what that would have been like. Um, I also thought the strength of the novel for me was looking at a kind of science versus religion and how our main character struggles with her sexuality against her mother's Christianity and how she kind of tries to reconcile those things and that ultimately she can't. And I thought the way it talked about um, 
how organized religion tries to impose these things on sexuality um i think it did a really good job it really undermined that in a way that i agree with i just found the plot a little bit a little bit flat and predictable um i don't know it just kind of followed its course i could kind of see where it was going and it's kind of a love story but i didn't find the love parts very convincing um i don't know i just didn't feel like we got enough time with the characters who are our main characters kind of few love interests to feel massively um invested so yeah it was it was good i would definitely read more from this writer i like the writing style but it just wasn't amazing for me i read the mystery of henry picked by david fuckinez this is translated from the french and it's like a literary mystery uh set in france about this manuscript that's discovered that everyone loves and trying to find out who's the author it was very fun very kind of like campy um reminded me a lot of frederick bachman's like lighter stuff like a lot um and it was fun i flew through it it felt very light-hearted it felt like a nice palate cleanser from reading more serious things there was a good little twist in it it was funny the characters were very like vibrant in that way that you know they're not they are caricatures but they're meant to be in this and yeah i just thought it was a really fun i had a lot of fun with it i'd give it like you know a 3.5 probably i also really like reading about stuff that's you know to do with publishing industry and books and literary world um i've just read in the back mischievous spirited and entertaining and i could not describe it better myself and then finally um i read dominicana by angie cruz and i love this book so much um i've had it on my shelf for a while kept meaning to pick it up and i absolutely loved it it's a coming of age story um about a young girl who grows up in the dominican republic and then kind of for to help her family marries a much older man and moves with him to new york and it's kind of about her experience as an immigrant in New York in the 1960s, as a Hispanic woman um, in a horrible, abusive relationship in a country where she doesn't speak the language. And it's just a brilliant and beautiful coming of age story, in my opinion. It covers a very short space of time. And a lot of the book is just Anna, our main character, in this apartment in New York because she can't really leave. Her world is very small because of, you know, all the reasons that I said. And... I, yeah, I loved it. I loved what it said about family and duty, loyalty, um, women's place in the world, relationships. This, I did feel very invested in the characters. In Anna, I really felt for her. There was some really good stuff in here on motherhood. There was definitely like plot in it, but it was also really like, I'm not sure beautifully written is the right word. It's quite like vibrantly written, like quite bright, musical. Um, and yeah, I just absolutely loved it. I think this is a kind of just one of those perfect novels that feels really fully formed and does what it's trying to do so so well okay so that all the books that i read in the second half of december please do let me know down below if you've read any of these books i'd love to know like i say i'll be back tomorrow with another video which will be my stats and then we'll get on to all the fun end of the year stuff hopefully the lighting has been a bit better um in this video obviously i'd love you subscribe my instagram my goodreads i'll link down below and i'll see you in my next one bye